the pathological and voluntary death. I, I made that piece back in 2017 um, out, of, out of my own frustration of what was going on in our society. Um, that was around the time that we were just hearing like massive killing where they were public, publicly um, announced, like, you know, the Michael Brown and um, Alton Sterling and um, Martin, Trayvon Martin. It, it just seemed like it did for the, um, a weekly thing that was happening, you know, with the killing. So um, I had, I had, I was already doing a show about um, our people, about, you know, just the violence and stuff and just um, dealing with the Jim Crow era and also slavery. And it just so happened that the Black Lives Matter movement was really starting to take an active um, presence in our society. All the other pieces have different tones of, of black brown you know I, I i i try to you know my pieces are kind of like stained glass so fragment i try to like capture every color of blackness that we represent so that's why i use like the dark and the brown and the the light skin and stuff like that what i did was i infused Jim Crow and Black Lives Matter. So listening to the interview of Alton Sterling's sister, that was one of the, the, the people who, who, um, who died from police brutality. Um, and I remember looking at that interview when she was talking to the, um, to the press, his son was sitting, was standing right next to his aunt, you know, um, and he was just crying, just, just, just uncontrollably crying, and I just was thinking, "Wow, you know, that was the first time I really saw like affection from a family member." And just, just really, just going, you know, just couldn't hold it in, you know. And um, I thought about my 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 dad if I was to lose my dad, and how that would affect me. So that's kind of how the birth of and the pathological and voluntary death took place because I, you know, we're dealing with Jim Crow with the lynching, and then we're dealing with the gun behind the kid's head. Um, it's just showing, you know, the same script, different cast. You know, it's just although the errors are different, it's still the same situation. Like the 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 intention is the same. You know, as far as like killing black lives. You know. And it, I, I'm, I was fed up. I'm still fed up. <laughs> but really now, I'm, I'm, I'm even more pissed, you know, um, with the whole thing that's been happening with um, Amon, you know, and um, is it ever going to end? <laughs> I'm just tired. I'm just so tired of just listening to just another killing that's senseless. <laughs> it just makes no sense. Um, and he can't even speak his 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 truth. I've had a couple friends that that committed suicide, you know, that were, you know, of color, people of color, uh, that were career. And you, you start to see this more now, like it's becoming more of a norm thing. Um, and I, I see why they they're pushing mental health awareness more, you know, because we really have to we go through a lot and we don't know how to decipher it. We don't know how to manage it. I'm going through a very weird stage right now. And I have a show coming up in October that had to do with the black church. And um, I don't know, like with all the stuff that's going on, all the events, the COVID, like I'm, I'm, I'm starting to change my direction of the show. I just think like maybe that need to be pushed back, or maybe I infuse the black church with this. You know, it, it just I haven't even started on that show because uh, of just all of this taking place. When I was teaching and stuff, and when we wasn't in quarantine, I was like, I need more time to paint. I need more time to create. 
I got all the time in the world right now. And I have only painted one painting. Um, and it says a lot about my mental, you know, state of mind. Like I really need to just let it out, you know, instead of just being so hard on myself and so depressed. And just, you know, play my music and stuff like that. Um, talk to my mom. <laughs> um, or or even like being able to still teach online is it, it, good for me because at least I know that my kids are out there and they're okay. You know, I've, I've, I've been buying vegetables that I have never even bought before, making all type of crazy salads and stuff like that and enjoying it, you know, and just being more conscious about what I eat. Like, like <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I was brought up on fried food and stuff <laughs> growing up, you know, and I still love it, but it's like, okay, let me just take a, a break from that. And I would not, like, I, I, I have to create something that has to deal with this, you know, um, this situation right now. Um, I just don't know what, you know, I have a lot of ideas in my head. Um, and maybe that needs to be my show in October, you know, um, but I, I, I just want us to all be healthy, you know, as far as like mentally, emotionally, physically. I think it's so important to take a walk if you need to get out the house. Like you having these conversations, I think it's very healing, not only for other people, but for me as well. Like I, I haven't had a chance to talk about how I've been feeling lately, you know? Um, so I thank you for this. Like, matter of fact, you know, probably when I get off the phone with you, I'm gonna, you know, take, do my walk around the lake and then like take my sketchbook and just do some sketches. Um, Cause I I have a I have a canvas a blank canvas that I've been looking at for about a month now and I was like today might be your day. Hi. That character's name is Jane, and she is actually uh, um, she's a pleasure robot that has been refurbished, and so now she has her own autonomy. And um, she she is a very special character to me because she represents uh, black femininity at its most unfettered and unbothered. You know, she doesn't care about what other people think of her. She, she doesn't care about the, the body's past as being uh, something that was exploited. She continues to in inhabit it and dwell in it and take pleasure in her existence. And um, she's really just a bad bitch that gives no fucks. <laughs> that is truly ultimately what Jane represents to me. Um, she also represents the, the character that she's sitting next to. Um, their name is Zeke. They are a survivor of traumas of being a military veteran and then also they're biracial, native, and white. So Zeke's story is that of reconciling the colonizer with the colonized experience. And, and Jane, he, he finds Jane and turns her back on. And she's like, I'm me and I love being me. And you seem to have trouble being you. So let's like, she, she becomes like his emotional support robot in a way. That's very, that, that's very recipro reciprocal. And it's not like she's doing service for him. She recognizes the pain in him and wants to bring him to a place where she already has arrived. And um, that's, they, they are partners in a, in a way that is very complex because she's not interested in being a girlfriend she's more of like a guide and she holds it down too um because zeke zeke is like a droid repair person so zeke is always traveling around and and going to different places to fix other people's robots and jane stays and um 
live streams. She's like a she's like a YouTuber in the future. So she, so lots of people are watching her, and she's like really cool and like nobody can know where they live because they have all of these like jammers. So they kind of have this little utopia that they get to exist in, and she um, she just really lives in pleasure and enjoyment and um, freedom to do what she wants within the the safety of this um this jam uh security system so that to me is what jane represents just that freedom that liberation um that knowledge that other people might have exploited you in the past but that's not going to let you um fall down all the way because ev every day is new and and just because those things happen to you in the past doesn't mean that you have to identify with them forever By, by owning up to the harm instead of running away from it, saying, yeah, it's really shitty. It's undescribably bad. How can I work towards a better future and not allow these things to continue to reproduce? Because they are. It's definitely not getting better <laughs> for, for us out here. Um, and so that is why we're meeting that challenge with ingenuity and grace and fearlessness every day. I'm black and Filipino and I was raised um, I was shared between both both sides of my family like my Filipino side and my black side um, so there was times when I was in a majority Filipino community and times when I was in a only predominantly black family and so I experienced a lot of prejudice and racism from from both sides um, and I just feel like I have an interesting take on what racism and solidarity can look like being a black and Asian person. So I actually never felt protected by the state. Um, growing up, I grew up in Southeast San Diego, um, which is the hood of San Diego, basically. And my first memory of, of a cop is, um, is after middle school, walking home with my friends and cops coming up to us and yelling at us to walk on the sidewalk or, or we'll get tickets. And this happened almost every day after school. And I remember walking, walking home from my friend's house at night and a cop with their sirens driving by and just feeling angst and anxiety and scared. And that my relation, my feelings or my reaction to cops has never changed. Um, and even now as a grown man, um, still living in, the hood in a different city, um, but cops still scare the fuck out of me. Um, so no, I do not like cops. Um, I don't like them. Also, there's like this myth, this model minority myth that is kind of being unveiled right now, especially with Chinese Americans and the fancy Asians that we call them. So we call them fancy Asians, like the colonizer Asians, and then there's the jungle Asians, which are the, the darker ones and the black ones. And that's something that like um, a lot of Filipinos and Cambodian Americans um, did, never really got to experience. There's this privilege of Asian Americans being smart, being good in math, having a lot of money, owning stores, um, and being in proximity to whiteness that a lot of darker skinned Asians never, never experience and don't affiliate with. And on the contrast, a lot of the darker skinned Asians live in the ghetto, they live in the hood, and they experience um, violence against the police and they go to prison too. But the community that I'm with, the people that I fuck with, don't go to galleries. 
and the art that we make isn't for the galleries. And we are not necessarily invited to be in galleries and we don't, that's, that's not our space, it's not in the gallery. In reaction to the Oakland Pulse nightclub massacre, after that, there was a huge movement for gun control and it was started mostly by white queer, liberal, liberal white queers. And in theory, a lot of the, the movement sounds, sounds okay, but in actuality, who it leaves out is a lot of black people, not black, brown, poor people not having access to guns. And I'm not for gun control because if all the white people have the guns and the systems are the only people who have guns, then we're not going to be able to defend ourselves. Um, and so that's something that I want to focus on in, in my art. There is, there's a protest that I'm going to later at 8 p.m. Um, I'm going with an affinity group of friends and I want to go to take pictures and they're going to be having, they're going to have my back so I can take pictures and feel safe and comfortable. The last time I went to a protest or the last real protest, I would like to say that I went to in Oakland was I think in 2016 when Trump got elected. And the same night that he got elected, there was this huge protest that just happened in downtown Oakland. It wasn't organized, it wasn't planned. Um, a lot of people just came out. There was this huge mass mobilization of all kinds of people, all walks of life, um, so diverse, all ages. And the, we were met with a lot of police, with a lot of police and militarization. There was tear gas. And also even within the protesters, um, the group of pro the people protesting, I'm, I as a photographer was experienced violence and I was yelled at, I was pushed and I had glass bottles thrown at me. Um, I was yelled at for people you were yelling at me for being a ca calling me a journalist. Um, being so someone who considers themselves of the people and wanting to be there to document the movement and document the emotion and what's going on, it's also not 100% safe for me um, because I I'll, will have a camera in my hand. So it's important for me to make sure my bases are covered and that I have my friends watching my back. And so that's something I'm gearing for. After this conversation, I'm gonna charge my batteries and make sure they're all charged, but that's something that I'm gonna be doing later tonight. Ashe and Aho, to everything you said, thank you. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to say is that um, what is unfolding before us is some of the greatest beauty I have ever seen in art movements. And what I'm speaking to, another gift from the pandemic, is we have access now to more art online than we have ever had and it's coming from mutual aid. Some of the most incredible, which a bunch are right here in Oakland, by the way, performance artists are opening up their song catalogs, are opening up their performance catalogs. You know, there's, there's teachers doing meditation for us. There's teachers doing, teaching us all kinds of medicine. Here comes LGBTQ uh, June Pride Month already. We're planning all of these ceremonies for you online so you can have accessibility. So, okay, so the inspiration, people go to museums because they get mused. Mused is another word for the inspiration from the divine. Get mused by all of this mutual aid and all of these incredible performances that are being open to us online and tip the hell out of the artists and the musicians, please. Uh, I mean, it was incredible. You know, I was surrounded by the sacred growing up. And, and my teacher, one of my teachers, one of my very profound teachers, my abuelita Chapita, who was a full-blooded, radio moody medicine woman without apology. 
She was one of the least colonized people I ever witnessed. She was one of my teachers. And I used to sleep with her. Everyone was scared of her. All the children were scared, not me. I used to sleep with her. And she used to talk to me through the night and infuse her wisdom inside of me. And when we slept together, she says, pay attention to your dreams. I mean, she was, you know, and she, and she said prophecies, some of what is happening now and has happened in my life. I heard as a child, a very young child, 12 years old when she started telling me the prophecies. Anyways, this is, she opened all the portals for me, my mother, my grandmother, you know, all my maternal, maternal grandmothers and my mother opened those portals and kept them alive for me as a child, as a child. Yeah, over and over daily, you know, I was looking for the magic and I was seeing the magic. My mother said, this isn't magic. This is what's actually organic and normal. God she is in everything. God is in everything. She's in everything. This is what my mother would tell me, you know, and I was, I was, a, I was a, you know, from then I'm, I was a junkie for God. I was, and I'm still a junkie. I'm a hunky junkie for God. You know, and I'm proud of it, you know. So <laughs> that's my focus. And I come to my medicines and I keep them alive by my art practice. And I figured out a way, because I have over 200 paintings that I made in Antioch. My 16 months in Antioch, I made over 200 paintings because that's all I did. That's all I did. So what I want to say is uh, those paintings now, they are, the, they are the foundation and the platform for my altars and my prayers and my medicine work. So here we go. I'm going to show you. Oh, there's my bag, my medicine bag that I painted. I did not paint that saguaro, but I am from the land of saguaros. I grew up with the saguaros in the Sonoran Desert, Tucson, Arizona. So here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We're coming up on the altars. This is my sanctuary. This is, this is actually my bedroom where I do all my medicine work. Right now during the pandemic, I'm not seeing folks, but I, I see folks online and I assist folks online. So there is my beautiful portrait for Yamaya and honoring of Yamaya. It's gifted by African American priests and priestesses in education, a 14 year education of Orisha. And here are the candles, the flowers. I have earth on here. I have the plant. I have water. I have medicines to burn. I burn copal, I burn sage, I burn tobacco. I offer all the medicines. I do ceremony here. And I live with two wild progressive social justice activists serious medicine people. They've been serving the community hardcore for 15 years. I told True Heart and Corey McMillan, my chosen shelter in place, familia. I hope this is not too fast, as you can see, and I hold altar space. Right now, this altar right here that I'm turning to that has the glass of water, that is an altar for Stacy Parks. Uh, uh, an LGBTQ person of color who is a visionary and a founder of uh, DJCC, Disability Justice Culture Club, transitioned eight days ago. So I'm holding an altar for her for eight days and eight nights and praying for her. She left us such an incredible legacy. So this is my room. This is my sanctuary. And I landed in an incredible monastery with my, my, my people, my chosen family here. A tool True Heart and Corey McMillan, um, who've been in service, and we're doing mutual aid here. So um, I'm so excited to be with two other people that are so creative. Rest, rest is holy. Weapons of mass distraction called overwork and capitalism are over unless you insist, unless you insist. It's over, people. Rest is holy. Tattoo that on your heart. That's a metaphor. That's a metaphor. Tattoo that on your heart. Rest is holy. You know, I'm planning to go out to some protests. I have a Mexican brother bodyguard that said, you're not going out there without me. I said, come on, brother. So we're going to go out there in safety. I'm going to take my medicines. I'm going to take my sage. I'm going to take my rattle. I'm going to take my bells. I'm going to, I'm going to do ceremony. 
you know, in a way that is safe because at this age, I, I started going to the streets in 1964 for the Vietnam War. I've been in the streets. I've gotten knocked down. I've gotten punched. I'm not into getting punched or knocked down anymore because I have 68,000 miles on my automator. Otherwise, I, some, I'd be, I used to do head dives and shit. I'm not doing that anymore. No <laughs> but I am fully committed. And I am fully committed to the deeper intentional ceremonial unification of our African community and our indigenous brown community. Intentional, intentional, that the ending of black racism has to ha happen first because nothing else will come down. It is the pillar that holds up all the other pillars of oppression. It holds up patriarchy. It holds up misogyny. It holds up classism. It holds capitalism. I have seen this in the sacred. That has to come down first. And that's what I have been trained to do as a political social justice activist. And I thank Reevaluation re Co-Counseling. This is a movement in 70 countries that trained me as an activist and helped me heal so I could see clearly and, 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 and deal with my own stuff. So I don't always have to be, well, what about brown lives matter? Yeah, brown lives do matter. But if we don't stop this hatred of black lives matter, there's not going to be any brown lives. Get it really clear, folks. Get it really clear. Right? Study up, read, learn, listen, find teachers you love. And I'm a teacher. Reach out for me. I'm a teacher. My, my work is to help you decolonize your own mind, your own body, your own liberation. You will do the work. I will be your guide if and when I have capacity. So thank you. Thank you for the gift of this. Please support our brand new Healing Arts LGBTQ Center. Please support our medicine carriers, carriers Kinfolks, Blackberry, you know, Smitty Figaro, and all the rest. Rahani, all the rest. Thank you for your love, for your attention.